Hey everyone. Today we're going to start talking about adding fractions with like denominators and unlike denominators. Uh, today is just a fraction theory kind of a day. Obviously, we're going to be using the pattern blocks for it, and I don't expect kids to be carrying pattern blocks in their pockets the rest of their lives. So today is just to build that conceptual understanding, and then we build on it from there. So this is just the proof that these things actually work. So we're going to start off with some easier problems, and we'll get into some uh, more difficult problems. We'll start off with one-third plus one-third, because that's like denominators. First of all, when we're adding in class, I don't like to slash sideways like this. I like to put them side by side, because I want those two pieces to line up. I want my numerators to line up, and I want my denominators to line up. Now, when I look at this, we're going to use our pieces here. Now, we're going to assume for everything that we're doing today, this is our one hole. Our hexagon is our one hole, which makes our trapezoid our one half which makes our rhombus our one-third, which makes our triangle our one-sixth. So those are the value of all of our pieces. So when they say one-third plus one-third, well, there's one-third plus one-third. Put them together, I have two-thirds. That's probably the easiest one we're going to get. And that proves to us that we don't add this denominator. Because that's just the name. That's the name of the family. It's the thirds family, and we have two of them. We have two thirds. Okay? So that's our first problem here. I'm going to put that answer up there so we can get that. Whoop. So we keep that answer up there. Now we're going to have one here where we're going to have two different denominators. When they're younger, we tell them the rule is you cannot add fractions with unlike denominators. What we're saying is you can't do that at the time. You can't do that. We're going to show them evidence that you actually can do that now. So one half, our one half piece is going to be a trapezoid, and our one sixth piece is going to be a triangle. Well, now I'm going to start putting things together. So let me start. Building this. I always say we always try to build towards building one of these hexagons. So we're going to put that together, and that doesn't look like anything right now. It doesn't look like anything. But if I say, what if we took this and we turned it into all triangles? So let's start stacking triangles here and figure out how many triangles we would have. So when we put that all together, we actually have one, two, three, four triangles. And we said that our triangles are a sixth, so one half plus one sixth is four sixths. Okay, so we were able to change that name. And we'll go into the math and the little tricks on how to do that, but to remember, today is just the evidence that this works. We just turned them into all triangles. So let's try it again here. Now I have two sixths plus one third. So once again, let me rewrite this problem. And two sixths. There's my two triangles. And one third. My trapezoid. Well, let's start building it. Let's try and build towards a hole here. So let's see here. There's that. Now we've got, uh, we had kind of a trapezoid and a triangle. Let's turn the whole thing into triangles. Let's get a common name for these things. And we know that that's going to be an important issue, is getting a common name. We'll cover it all in triangles to get a common name so we can write down that denominator name. So now our name is going to be six because we're using triangles. And how many? One, two, three, four. Two sixths plus one third equals four sixths. Now, when we do subtraction, it's going to be a little bit different. So let me pull a 
a subtraction problem that I have hidden here. Our top one's actually going to be pretty easy. 3 6 minus 2 6. Now I know a lot of kids are going to tell me, well, 3 6 is 1 half. I go, okay, but let's use the name that they're talking about here. So 1, 2, 3. I have 3 6 there, and I'm going to eliminate 2 6. Like we said, when you have like denominators, those are the easiest problems. So take away two of them. What do I have left? I have one sixth. That makes a pretty easy problem for us when we have like denominators. Now let's jump down to a more difficult one down at the bottom. Two-thirds minus one-half, all right? Well, here's a third, and here's a third. And like I said, whenever I use these pieces, I try and build them like I'm building towards my one hole. So there's my side I'm trying to build of that hexagon. And let's see here. Can I cover this thing up with a half? Because that's what I'm going to do. When I have a half to take away, I'm going to put this on top and try and get rid of some pieces. Look at that. I covered it up, and the only piece I have left here is that blue triangle. And then I'll ask the kids, what does the blue triangle look like? Well, it looks like the green triangle. Well, how much is our triangle worth then? It's worth one-sixth. So two-thirds cover up and take away this half is actually worth one-sixth. So like we said at the beginning of the lesson, I don't expect them to use pattern blocks all the time. This is just for some conceptual understanding. It helps us while we're at the beginning of this. Eventually, we move, move towards just using the math and figuring out how to make common denominators, simplifying fractions, those types of things. But here is the beginning of adding fractions with like and unlike Teacher denominators using pattern blocks.